Liebe Muschpad Army, hier ist euer Kajo. Vielen lieben Dank, dass ihr eingeschaltet habt bei uns auf YouTube. Heute mal in einer anderen Umgebung. Wir sind hier bei mir auf dem Balkon, haben ein paar Renovierungsarbeiten drüben. Das jedoch soll uns nicht aufhalten von unserem heutigen Thema. Und zwar gibt es hier exklusiv ein Interview mit Paolo von Trivium. Wer die Band verfolgt, der weiß, die Jungs haben ein neues Album geschrieben. Nennt sich What the Dead Men Say, kommt über Roadrunner Records raus. Ende April. Ich möchte an dieser Stelle auch das Intro kurz halten und wünsche euch viel Spaß mit dem Interview und wir sehen uns am Ende noch mal kurz wieder. Um, I, when I'm writing lyrics, I'll usually keep a note uh, in my iPhone that'll just be like things that inspire me, things that sound interesting or could be used for lyrics later. Uh, big fan of Philip K. Dick, so you know, anytime I read something of his or see something of his that maybe could be cool for lyrics, I, I jot it down, and that was one of the things. And when we were writing that song in rehearsal, I knew that um, I had a cool title in mind if I could find the right song for it, and that one just fit perfectly. Um, you know, I think the thing that I loved about his short stories and his novels is that a lot of that information isn't given. So, you know, it's up to the reader to really determine. And, you know, with the little world we've been building with the song, with the videos, I want people that are viewing it or listening to the song to kind of come up with their own interpretation. Um, I don't know, again, it's, it's like one of those things, I'm like, I, I don't want to give too, too much away, um, you know, some sort of purgatory, I guess you could say, but other than a name, I don't know, you know, whatever, whatever you think it is, is what it is. Um, you know, largely, I think there aren't a lot of huge differences because we wrote and record in a very similar process. We worked with Josh Wilbur once again. Uh, Alex came back for the uh, record. So we have a lot of stability within our band once again and the writing process didn't change much, but I think it's a darker record. I think it's a little more progressive. I, th I just think it was just from like jamming and just kind of being in that mindset when we got into the studio and You know, you're gonna definitely hear, I think, an improvement overall on the on the sound. But you know, it was kind of hard with the last record doing so well, and you know, in my opinion, sounding great. It's hard to to top that, but I do think we were able to do a little bit better this time. Well, uh, sickness unto you, Matt had wrote and it was sort of more of a personal thing so i'll leave any interpretations of that song up to him uh, whenever you know he wants to talk about it uh, catastrophist essentially i've been reading a lot of stuff like you know naomi klein's uh, shock doctrine um, just reading a book called the unhabitable uninhabitable earth um, you know just really kind of seeing how the world is uh, responding to crises all around the world that are unfolding slowly, you know, and how we just seem to be incapable of dealing with it. And also just how, you know, a lot of these things are really kind of set, are put into motion, I should say, uh, long before we're even born, you know. So unfortunately, people that are, are being born today will be dealing with these crises that we are leaving for them. And so I guess it's sort of like a meditation on those things. I don't really have a good answer on, you know, what to do about all that stuff because there's really no good answer, you know. It, it seems to be something that is uh, an issue that we are incapable of handling. Uh, what else? Bleed Into Me. Uh, Bleed Into Me, I wrote, um, I started coming up with the lyrics when I was coming home from the airport one day. I was on the train here in Chicago and saw someone shooting up with, uh, you know, shooting up heroin. And it just kind of got these things rolling in my mind about, you know, these sort of, again, crises and issues that 
we fail to deal with and a lot of times we just ignore or pretend they don't exist but that sometimes becomes inescapable you know the, the problem presents itself it shows you it's you know you can't look away from it and so I kind of wrote that in mind of like you know this meeting eye to eye with this person going through this and having to kind of like live this story live their story you know in that moment that the connection is shared between us The video concept was created by an amazing director named Ryan Macfall, who also did the What the Dead Men Say video as well. Um, you know, he really just took the lyrics of Catastrophist and really crystallized it into a great, uh, you know, concept of this sort of, you know, I guess you could say dangerous game being played between, I don't know, some sort of contestant and, you know, some sort of attacker, oppressor, whatever you want to call it, uh, really kind of uh, using the rope and the, um, I guess, the traps that are set up as sort of metaphors for, you know, the way we sort of live in the world with uh, the way we sort of compete for, for resources and things when instead of working together, we decide to pit each other against each other. And, um, you know, I think of course, like a book like The Hunger Games definitely deals with a lot of those themes. Uh, but, you know, he, he was really able to kind of crystallize this thing I had in my lyrics. I, I, like I said, with Catastrophist, I didn't really have a sort of like, well, this is like what's happening and this is how to deal with it. You know, I left it kind of open to interpretation and Ryan interpreted those lyrics into that video. We released What the Dead Men Say last week. Um, we're definitely gonna be filming some more videos. It's really dependent on the quarantine and how things are. It's really up in the air at the moment how we're gonna do it, but uh, we will do it. We will be back on tour. We will be promoting this record at some point, and we're gonna play a lot of these songs live, so definitely do not worry about that. Um, you know, we do have stuff online right now on our web store you can buy. We have no control over the supply chains. A lot of our vinyls were already um, sent to us. They were made, so if you already pre-ordered stuff, you will be getting that. But again, a lot of that stuff is out of our hands, so we can't really control that. And, you know, it, it sucks because it will hurt probably the first week numbers in places where physical sales are still very important. but. In our opinion, it mattered to get the music out. People need things to enjoy and to, to listen to. And, you know, we weren't gonna be a band that was gonna push the record just because we wanna have inflated first week numbers. You know, it, it is what it is. Like, we want the music out there. We want people to be able to have it, enjoy it, listen to it. I used to collect a little bit of vinyl, but when I moved to Chicago, I had sold everything. I, it was kind of too much to keep around. Um, as for people buying and selling them, you know, that's up to them. That, that's their thing, and I respect that. And, you know, I've bought plenty of vinyl for, you know, resale later. So, um, it is what it is. Well, the rest of 2020 is really going to be up to how this virus plays out and how the world, you know, manages the crisis. And that is completely above my pay grade and what I can control in the world. But we will come back. We will be in Germany. Um, we're excited to get back, you know, and we, we just hope everyone stays safe and, you know, we'll get through this thing and we'll have fun at the other end of it. Probably the funniest one that I have was when I went to see a band called Origin. Uh, they were opening for Vader, and this was in, I don't know, maybe 2001, 2002. And I was up front, there wasn't a lot of people there, but the show was great. And dude came in like real crazy, like, you know, headbagging and stuff, and he was way bigger than me. I was pretty small then. And 
he like grabbed my shirt, but then he like grabbed my like dick and balls, literally picked me up and threw me out of the front row space and just continued to headbang like he did nothing. And I was, you know, obviously physically, you know, <laughs> feeling like shit after that. So uh, yeah, that was a, a pretty crazy mosh pit story. So I don't know, I haven't had anything crazier than that happen to me. It's been a while since I've been in a mosh pit myself because I gotta keep these uh, safe. Uh, otherwise, I won't be playing bass for a long time if I break them. Das war das Interview mit Paolo. Ich muss sagen, es war sehr, sehr unterhaltsam. Ich fand die Moshpit-Geschichte sehr, sehr lustig an dieser Stelle. Jetzt seid ihr gefragt, und zwar holt ihr euch das neue Album von Trivium. Wie denkt ihr über das Konzept oder die einzelnen Songs? Lasst es uns wissen unten in den Kommentaren. Ich würde mich sehr, sehr freuen, mit euch darüber zu diskutieren. Bestellt euch die Platte jetzt vor. Denkt dran, in April kommt das gute Stück raus. Und ja, das war's auch hier heute von meiner Seite. Lasst uns noch bitte ein Abo da und einen Daumen nach oben für dieses Video. Teilt es auch sehr, sehr gerne, wenn ihr wollt. Wir sehen uns beim nächsten Mal wieder und ciao.